Hey guys, welcome back to The Walk, a weekly devotion with 413. Uh, this week I want to talk to you about who will make it to heaven. Um, this is a very serious teaching for me. Um, you know, it, it's as early Christians, uh, you know, when I was becoming a Christian, uh, this was a question um, before I really gave my life to Christ is, you know, how do we get there? What can't we do? What can we do? And, uh, you know, I think in today's culture, uh, even certain churches put things too lightly and uh, allow way too many things that don't line up with Scripture. And, uh, you know, Scripture tells us exactly who's not going to make it, and it tells us exactly how to make it. Um, so this is going to put into place um, it's really a good basis of you know how you start should start living if you're not living this way already <clears throat> and if you live in in the ungodly ways this might be a good time to change so let's just start with who's not gonna make it so first Corinthians 6 9 through 11 says this don't you realize that those <clears throat> who do wrong will not inherit the kingdom of God don't fool yourselves. Those who indulge in sexual sin or who worship idols or commit adultery or are male prostitutes, practice homosexuality or thieves or greedy people or drunkards or abusive or cheat people, none of these will inherit the kingdom of God. Some of you were once like that, but you were cleansed, you were made holy, you were made right with God by calling on his name, on calling of the name of Lord Jesus Christ and by the spirit of our God. So <clears throat> notice in 11 where it says some of you once were like that. Me personally, I was once like that. Um, the sexual sin, the, the um, adultery, the... Uh, drunkenness, um, it's all of these bad things, cheat, uh, liar, uh, greedy, you know, basically everything except for homosexuality above that, that was me. Um, and like it says, but through the power of Jesus Christ, I was able to be washed away of all that and be able to walk with Christ and set on a holy place and set on a holy path with Jesus. And, uh, you know, if you're any of that above, you don't have to keep going down that road. Repentance is what you need. And God will forgive every disgusting, malice thing you've ever done in your life. And you can get on track with Him. So, those who make an abomination before the eyes of the Lord are those who practice and take pleasure in those things which are in the flesh. The Lord sees it as an abomination. Abomination here means an outrage, a disgrace, a scandal, a hateful thing, a repugnant and loathsome thing. These are the things which not only God finds unacceptable, but are also been seen as some outside of the moral and traditions of educated and biblical uh, meanings. Uh, those in adultery or fornication, those living unclean lives in drugs and alcohol, those who are gluttons, swearers, blasphemers, and liars. Those who live in a constant quarreling, wrath, anger, envy, uh, and like thereof. Those who let their lust and passion control their lives in uh, an immediate self-gratification of life. Those people are abomination to God. So those people will not make it to heaven. Um, you know, we can't live like the world and expect to enter the kingdom of God. We cannot have these, um, perverse, um, ungodly ways of life and expect to be in the glory of God's kingdom. It's unacceptable and it's a disgrace to God, really. Um, just, you know, something that really set me off when I came to Christ and <clears throat> really started you know, dedicating my life to him 
And, it, you know, I think the one thing I remember in a sermon that really uh, set the light bulb off, I guess you can say, in my past, I was cheated on many a times through many different relationships. I was, you know, the girl I was dating or whatever, she cheated on me with other people. And that's something God brought a light to me because I guess it was so embedded deep in my heart that I, I can't stand cheating. Uh, I can't stand people that do it. So, but God said, you do that when you lust for other people. You do that when you commit adultery. You do that when you fornicate. You do that when you look at porn. You do all that to me. So how does that feel? You cheat me. The only way we do not cheat God in a, a manner of sexual, uh, you know, if you get married, if you do it unto covenant of God, you are not cheating God because you are under covenant with God and he allows marriage for the, those pleasures. You know, this could be a whole different sermon. This could be a whole different teaching. But think about that. If you in your life has, has ever been cheated by somebody, you're doing the same thing to God if you're living like this. And you're expecting to be called a Christian, but you're living like this. It's not right. Don't judge others because you will be judged. So <clears throat> you can't judge and you have to forgive. Luke 6, 37 says, Do not judge others and you will not be judged. Do not condemn others and you... And, <laughs> I'm sorry. Do not condemn others, or it will all come back against you. Forgive others, and you will be forgiven. Um, you know, this is part of the living holy. You cannot hold a grudge. You cannot hold unforgiveness. Because God looks at that and says, you know, I'm not going to forgive you because you haven't forgiven them. It's extremely important in your walk with Christ to be blameless and to forgive because forgiveness is powerful. And forgiveness is not for the person that you have unforgiveness against. It's for you. It's for your freedom. So always remember that in forgiveness. It's extremely important to forgive others for your self-preservation. Because God is not going to forgive you and he's going to hold it against you. So remember that. But there is only one way to heaven. And that's through Jesus and having that one-on-one -on -one relationship and knowing his ways, okay? So John 14, 6 through 7 says this, Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. If you had really known me, you would know who my Father is. From now on, you, you do know him and have seen him because of through me you cannot get to heaven without having a relationship with Jesus you know people think you know um, that just being a good person is gonna get you to heaven uh, going to church every Sunday is gonna get you to heaven no Jesus is direct in his uh, scripture direct multiple times that he is the only way and you have to have a one-on-one -on -one personal relationship with him he gave us the holy spirit he died to give us the holy spirit us not utilizing the holy spirit is not having the relationship with jesus if you're not hearing from god if you're not walking with god if you're not you know, feeling God's presence, then you need to really sit down and say, do I know Jesus? Um, you know, sometimes in life, you're going to have pause moments. You're going to have moments where God will not talk to you. But you might have something in your life you need to get corrected before he talks to you. He might be silent because he's waiting on you to move. Just remember, you need the relationship with Jesus to make it to heaven. You cannot be a good person. You cannot just do good things, you know, any of that, and get to heaven. No, it doesn't work like that. Jesus said, no, I didn't die for it to be that easy for you. You have to do some work. 
And you have to put forward the effort in having a relationship with me. You cannot have my inheritance if I don't know you. You understand? How, how, how would that be if your parents <clears throat> had an inheritance for you and then some stranger gets the money instead of you? That wouldn't make any sense, would it? So, as children of God, the only way to get his inheritance, his eternal inheritance is to know him and have a relationship with him and claim him as father father god other than that you do not know him and he does not know you you're a stranger to god so that hope that makes sense those who truly believe in jesus christ these are those who have understood the sacrifice of jesus at the cross and have cast upon him all the burdens of their souls they are those who have trust in the Lord, accepting that all he says is true, who have put their trust in him no matter what happens. They take the wisdom Jesus offers as theirs, the righteous Jesus offers as theirs, the justification Jesus also offers as theirs, the forgiveness Jesus offers as theirs, the redemption Jesus offers as theirs. They believe in Jesus of Nazareth and have come to him for their salvation, trusting in him and him alone. In spite of what the world may throw at them and in the trust and belief in a faith which provides inner peace no matter what. You have to believe and trust and give everything to God. That is relationship. When you completely trust in your father because you know your father and you know he's not going to let you down, that is relationship. John 17.3 says this. And, and John 17.3 says this. And this is the way to have eternal life, to know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, the one that's that you sent to earth you know that's eternal life that is something important you know all the things we listed above on who's not gonna make it there's a little bit more work on who's gonna make it it's easy to not make it it's harder to make it you know I know in, in a way it's a simple but it's also a false reality when people say, you just got to believe in Jesus. Yeah, anybody can believe in Jesus. But you also got to have a relationship in that belief. You can't just say, oh, I believe in Jesus. Anybody can say that. You know? But you have to put work. Jesus didn't die for you not to put work in. For you not to have convictions. For you not to have fall, you know, following through on the convictions. You have to put work in to make it you know yes salvation is a free gift but once you get that gift there's work behind the gift you cannot be lazy in your salvation so the gate is narrow into heaven Matthew 7 13 14 says this the narrow gate you can enter God's kingdom only through the narrow gate the highway to hell is broad and his gate is wide for many who choose that way. Many choose that way, like we said earlier. But the gateway to life is a very narrow, and the road is difficult. And only few ever find it. Few find it. I believe wholeheartedly that there's many good people that made it to hell because they didn't follow through on that narrow gate. That they chose to live a life of themselves. Might have been great, compassionate, even giving people. But they didn't have a relationship with God. And they didn't follow his commands. And they lived for self instead of for kingdom. Many good people made it to hell. Few make it to heaven. In a society and a culture we live in today where everything is at our disposal, at our fingertips, 
Everything is easy. Mentality of people, they just want an easy life. But as a Christian, we need to be a little bit more challenging to ourselves to do God's work. In this next scripture, it lays out good deeds and the difference of it. So good deeds don't get us into heaven. The Bible speaks of this. Good deeds do not get us into heaven. Titus 3.5 says this. He saved us not because of the righteous, righteous things we have done, but because of his mercy. He washed away our sins, giving us a new birth and a new life through the Holy Spirit. Our good deeds are useless to God. What God wants is our relationship and for us to follow him. Yes, doing good things are great but they're meaningless without God. Yes, you can help all kind of people with money and stuff, but they're meaningless without God. Many good people made it to hell. I hate to be blunt, I hate to be rash, but the Bible says it. You know, <clears throat> if you're living a life, and it's an easy life, if you're living a life and it's easy, you might want to step back and take a minute and think about, is it the right life? Is it God's life? Is it a godly life? If you're doing whatever you want, you know, whenever you want to do it, you're not putting God as a priority in your life, that's the first telltale, and you're living for yourself, indulging in pleasure, then maybe you're not going to make it. Yes, I believe, but Timmy, I believe. I believe in Jesus. That's great. But do you have a relationship with Jesus? Believing in relationship are two different things. I can believe I'm going to win the lottery. But that don't mean it's going to happen. I don't play it. You got to actually play the lottery to win it. But that's the thing. People play with Jesus, and they don't, you know, they play with what they think Jesus should be to them. The box Jesus. Put Jesus in a box, take him out only when we need him, put him back in it. Telling you that is not right. He wants a relationship with you. He wants you to live for him. He wants you to turn off that computer and not watch that stuff anymore. He wants you to put that drink down and not drink it anymore. He wants you to watch your mouth and not say those words anymore. He wants you to forgive that person. No matter if you don't like them or not, forgive them and get over it so that you can have the freedom. He wants you to stop lying. He wants you to really sit down, stop being busy, and say, yes, God, what can I do for you? It's not that hard, guys. It's not that hard. It might be a little uncomfortable sometimes, but it's not that hard. So I hope this helps. Sorry if I stepped on any toes, but sometimes we got to be real because we love y'all. And if you're listening to this and you got something out of it, praise Jesus, because that's what it's all about. But listen, you know, if we didn't love you, we would not speak this. You know, people who really care about you speak the truth. Even if it's going to hurt your feelings, because that's what we're supposed to do. We'd rather hurt you for a little bit now than compromise your eternity in hell. I'd rather you hurt just a little bit listening to this and you spend an eternity in a burning lake of fire in a dungeon of hell for eternity. The, the five, ten minutes of hurt, pain by listening to this, maybe correcting your spirit, is a lot easier than eternity. So guys, I love y'all. We love y'all at 413. 
Um, we really hope that you're getting something out of these devotions. Um, Warren has been doing excellent on his, and uh, I appreciate him covering for me last week. We just had a lot of stuff going on, and uh, I think God was waiting for this message to come forth, and he was working on it last week in me. So I hope this helps you guys. Um, please subscribe to our YouTube so you can keep up with these and other videos we may have. We've got an incredible month coming up next week. I mean, uh, next week. Yeah, it seems like it's going to be a week away. In a couple weeks, the beginning of March starts with the kids' fishing rodeo at Lamar Dixon. So get the kiddos coming. we got tons of prizes. And then right after that, we have the Sportsman Show, which is a huge event for us. And we got all kind of things coming up after that. We got some fishing trips. We got sure hunting trips. We got all kind of stuff. So just keep in touch with us. And also, you know, if you need prayer for any reason, uh, just drop down in the comments. We'll pray for you. Hit the like button if you like the video. And just please subscribe and even get some friends or whatever, even people you might work with and you think need to hear some of these messages. Get them to watch and subscribe too. Because we're about reaching the world, guys. This ministry is about reaching the world. It's not, you know, this is not a self thing. It's not a, a thing of our own built up. It is spreading the word of God to reach people that need to hear the word of God. And that's what we're about. So God bless y'all. Love y'all. And let's pray. And I hope you have a good day. That rhymed. So, Lord, we love you. We thank you, Lord. We just pray, God, that this message sent a heartfelt revealing of what needs to happen in us, oh God. God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your direction. We thank you for your grace upon us. We thank you for always being there for us, oh God. Lord, we just ask and re rebuke the enemy in all aspects of what he does to us, oh God. We pray for a revealing of how to correct the wrongs we are doing, oh God. Holy Spirit, we invite you into us right now, God. Say that with me. Holy Spirit, we invite you into us. Lord, help us and guide us. And Lord, we rebuke Satan's lies. We rebuke that the lies of the enemy that says we can do all these unholy things and get away with it. We rebuke that in the name of Jesus. And we believe in Christ Jesus, that he is holy and he wants us to live holy along with him, oh God. Father, strengthen us in our relationship with you so that we may be one with you, O oh God, and that we may change the world and get it on track in a better world for us, O oh God. Lord, we love you, we thank you, and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a good day. Love y'all.